Hi there, morning, folks. And it's the first time I'm uh, seeing all of you as opposed to you just hearing me because yesterday I did do our first show of 2023, which I'm happy to report on Clock in the Gallop was a very popular one um, because the Ghost Rider tipped uh, the first PA of the new year and made uh, profit, a nice healthy profit. And not only that, Lyle Cooper, um, I snuck in a preview with Tony Riverland from Kazoo yes. in the last 24, 48 hours. And uh, he was responsible for a 12 to 1 exact to yesterday in the penultimate race. And he was very forthcoming with his information. He said to me, Nico, the two horses, there's not much between them. Uh, but he did like the winner, Kimura. But he also thought that the runner up had a big chance. But a warm welcome to you and a very happy new year to you and your uh, family. And all the best. And uh, may it be a prosperous one as well as for Clock in the Gallop fans. Yeah, thank you, Nico. It's good to have you back. And, um, your first comment, you said, good to see everyone. I don't know how you're seeing everyone. All you're seeing is me. Yeah, but okay. uh, it's lovely yeah. to be back. And and we'll be working again uh, today, you and I, at Turpentine. Well, we'll be working today, which in case we'll see everyone there at the course, because everyone that does come out of the course will see us. We'll yeah. see them. Um, you and I sure. are presenting together on a day where there are some feature races out at Turfontaine today. Yeah. It's effectively the New Year's Day meeting, but it's held on the 2nd, which is a public holiday today. So we're looking for a good turnout at Turfontaine because there's some nice horses in action today. And we've got some strong thoughts, both you and I, on those. Yeah, we, we do. I've got, I've got some nice strong bankers today. And uh, some other races are pretty open, but at least we've got those bankers that I like. We'll see if you like them as well. Okay, well, we'll go through the card. But just before we do that, we've got an important port of call to make first, an important motion of business. And that is our Clock in a Gallop direct line, which, as you know, Lyle, um, we're all involved in, and we all put together our uh, assumptions and thoughts and put them into a sheet of paper, which is sent out to everyone on a daily basis for four days. And I'm just going to quickly take the punters through this. If you haven't heard already, the Clock in the Gallop direct line is back for this coming weekend's racing, which features the Lomerant King's Plate on Saturday, the 7th of January. But we're starting the week early on Thursday with our meeting at the Val, then moving into Friday's meeting at Fairview, Saturday at Kenilworth, and the Sunday meeting at Scottsville. So you're getting four meetings. It'll cost you 250 Rand. We'll offer all our selections. The team does get together, deliberates, uh, very healthy discussions, which Alal will attest to in a moment yeah. about the yeah. um, about the uh, races that are taking place. Lyle, just very quickly, if I could just bring you in there. Um, we do have healthy, long discussions between all the team members about what to eventually include. So the difference between our Clock in the Gallop uh, previews that you'll see versus the Clock in the Gallop direct line is the Clock in the Gallop direct line is a joint collaborative effort. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. We we laugh a lot, Nico, especially you and I, we laugh a lot. And um, we have a lot of fun and the guys take it very seriously. And it's a very talented team. It's been a privilege, privilege uh, being part of it. Yeah, okay. So that's coming up later on this week. Don't forget, if you want to be part of it, 250 Rand is the cost. Just deposit into the FNB account on the screen at the moment and then use your name and your mobile numbers reference send it through to us that proof of payment to our email address clock in the gallop at gmail.com or send it via whatsapp to us on 79 and then you'll come on board and you'll receive notification from us that uh, you are on board it's growing substantially over the last 48 hours and especially after yesterday's success as well it continues to grow so let's move into today's meeting and uh, lyle We've got nine races on the cards today. The going is good to soft. I can confirm that our going is good to soft. The penetrometer reading is 26. And I'm just looking at the latest release, um, which was only yesterday afternoon, actually. They had um, 26 and a half millimeters of rain on New Year's Day and overnight into a uh, new year. Uh, but the going was good to soft. I suspect it might well have dried out a little bit more since yeah. then because I didn't have any rain where I am, although it threatened to rain, but I didn't have any rain here yesterday where I live. No, us too. But uh, yeah, that new drainage, I think it'll drain nicely. If 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 the sun stays and it stays like this, I think by the time we race, it could be good, Nick. It could be yeah, good. Okay. So we've got uh, nine races carded. It is on the stand side track. First race pretty early, quarter past 12 for a maiden plate over a 1,000 metres. And in the first race of the day, number 10, Secret Reef. You can put the blinkers on Secret Reef now. Um, and uh, I think that's the only change that I can come up with. Whilst I get the betting up, 
Mr. Yes. Cooper. Um, the interesting runner, obviously, in the first race has to be the newcomer number 12, Civil Princess. I say that because I remember she was meant to make her debut not so long back. Um, and I think that early money did come for her there. And I had an opportune moment to speak to Lawrence Werner's aside. Oh, good. This is the yeah. same horse. And I said to him, what about that horse that was meant to run today, but was scratched? And uh, there was no official comment uh, from him to me, but I just judging by the facial expressions that uh, he responded with, um, this is something. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Because I went and looked at the breeding. The mare won over 1,200 metres, so she had the speed um, in Argentina. And Daniel Boone is a fairly new sire, as far as I know, Nico. Yeah. I went and looked, I but to, not a, I not tried a lot to look time. up about it. You know, the best person yeah. to, to obviously speak about on this one would be Justin Fermark, um, yes. who bought the source for Lawrence when he went to Argentina. But we've got Puerto Manzano running later on. And if that's anything to go by, uh, well, that's turned yeah. out to be. I, I think that she's something, this horse. We'll obviously have a good look at her, the course, but um, the betting suggests when I bring it up that uh, that there is lots of money on us today. Yeah, she's obviously very nasty bred, and, and we'll see. Have you got the betting up yet? Um, I haven't. Um, I'm trying okay. to get in there, but apparently it can't open the right page. So I'm, I'm battling a little bit with that. Okay. But, uh, but she was a favorite last time. Last time I looked, she was a 12 to 10. Yes. So certainly a lot of money. So the way we need to pay this first race is either you go for her, and I'm glad that you'll be in the parade ring because you can have a look for the punters and tell them what you think. So it's either her or um, the horses with experience, which of, of the horses with experience, I'm narrowly going for number two, Iron Sky, Stu Pedigree, Cabello, Matsunyani, the form's there. Um, number three, which is Dungeons. I remember um, this horse when it went over 20 to one. I made it my value bet for the quartet. And it's improving, and it beat Iron Sky last time. And then, of course, number one, Var Park, who's got some really good form earlier in mm. uh, his career, but he is held in the last run. So it's very confusing. And then um, a horse like number 11, rocking the time away, could uh, be there and thereabouts. Um, Malasena Kajedi, I think he's a decent apprentice, this one, Nico, um, that rides number 11. So it's either the first timer or 2 1 3 and 11 in that order for me. I'm not sure what you thought. You know, interesting that you bring up rocking the time away because uh, I'm going to hopefully get the betting up. But interesting that you should say that because when I looked last night, it was something like 12 to 1. Um, yes. There are two fillies. Obviously, the rest of costs. These are two fillies at the bottom of the weights. But she's a four-year-old filly only carrying 55. So she, as the sort of most um, accomplished horse in terms of number of runs, carries the lowest yeah. weight. Um, I thought that she was quite juicily priced at 12 to 1 in terms of her form, and, and maybe I just agree. before Prentice Good allowed, point. she could well come into it. But I think everything hinges. I'm just looking now. Civil Princess has actually shortened into 7.5 to 10. Um, oh, wow. Uh, from, well, from 12 to 10. Yeah. So it, it does, it, there's certainly something going on there. And I suspect yeah. that, that she'll be the right horse over here. So let's let's wait and see when we get to the track on that first race. But that does look like where the business is. Okay, nine races. Is right. Race two is the start of the bipod at 12.50, 10 to 1. It's a maiden play for fillies and mares over 1,400 metres. Um, just going to the changes in the second race, number two, Tree Fairy um, has blinkers on. So blinkers got on number five, and then that's the only change really there. Um, yeah. Give us your thoughts on the second and the way you saw the second panning out. Well, I think it's quite competitive. I see that October Fair was the favourite, but um, when I when I studied this race, I quite liked uh, number three, Sky Velocity, who's running again. Ran on the 29th of December, so um, ran three lengths behind Black Lightning. Keegan the Miller for Johan Jans van Furen, the draw of one. I thought that was the value, Nico. It was about nine to two. And then, of course, um, the obvious one, number, number 11 and 12, October Fair and written in the sand. They both must have chances. They're both very much in the betting. And then um, a horse like number five, Tree Fairy, funny enough, the one you mentioned there. If we mm. look at Tree Fairy, the last run, she's two and a quarter lengths behind Powers That Be, and she's two and a half kilograms better off. And on the run behind Run For Cover, she's two and a quarter lengths behind Sky Velocity and two kilograms better off. Blinker Strike, she's 14 to one. She has to be value for at least a place. So for me, Tree 
11, 12, and 5. Okay. Right. What I'm going to do, um, courtesy of soccershop.bet, because I know that they have um, – I can't access where, I, where we normally get our betting, but oh, okay. um, I know that Soccer Shop do um, – well, have um, – upgraded their website so it also gives us a chance to look at at this website over here so i'm going to just going to put this betting up this was the first race betting um where yes. you'll see that civil princess here is eight to ten i wow. was five to one brosnan which is another first time it was five to one there's been a bit of money for that actually dungeons yeah. was an eight to one you've got to take one of these prices uh var park was ten to one so that's the way and, th and there's our rocking the time away at 12 to one there we can see yeah. Good that rugby there that we liked at 12 to 1. But basically, princess, yeah, civil princesses there. And then let's go to the second race, which we're currently talking about. And there you've got October Fair at 22 to 10, uh, written in the sand. Now, great for the Habib stable to have had three winners last Thursday. Yes. Oh, it was wonderful. Was, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. And this filly written in the sand is um, related to Matador Man, and uh, to Hawker Typhoon, and I think we'll get the trip. The problem for me with October yeah. Fair was the trip, actually, um, yeah. 1450. I had a question mark against the distance on October Fair because I remember the mother, Miss October, was a sprinting filly. Yeah. Now, then you go yeah. to horse like Spielberg. She's the half-sister to Spielberg, but Spielberg's by Futura. Now, if anyone gets a horse to stay, it would be Futura, let alone Silvano, and yeah. uh, Spielberg doesn't stay. Spielberg, yeah, okay. so you I'm make not a good point. That October Fair gets the trip of fourteen hundred. It will see today. Yeah, Miss October, Miss October won five times over a thousand meters straight. That's right. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, she was yeah. an aventure, aventure horse, mm. and raced in aventure's colours. So, what about this uh, daughter of Kingman called to glory? Oh um, wow! Extremely yeah. well bred out of Smart Paul. Yeah, I, I wrote you extremely well bred. Will improve. Obviously, a, a disappointing debut. Went off at 16 to 1. So I'm going to sit on the fence today. But again, I'm glad you'll be upstairs to have a look at this horse. And uh, any money coming will take big notice. This is no, yeah. beautifully bred. But yeah. I thought the three and the five were a bit of value here, Nico. Okay, so Sky Velocity and Tree Fairy. I think we. This is a tough race. I think it, it's t a lot mm. tougher than it purports to be when you look at it. It's tough. Um, when I was yeah. looking at Ashley Fortune's comments on a touch of sugar, and number eight, which has got no chance on form, uh, she said in the front here that it it will improve after its rest yeah. since July. So I think there's quite a few improvers over here, but I'm not convinced that October Fair um, will see out the 1400 at Turf and Ten on the yeah. stat side track. I, I much prefer, for me, written in the sand, uh, being from yeah. a warm yard that's now had three winners. And Lorena I'm sits taking on, on the favourite as well. And Lorena sits on that. So the, the, the general consensus there is that we're taking on the favourite you know, in race number two, the opening lane. We are. Okay, let's go to the start of the PA. Now, race three opens that up at 25 past one. It's a maiden over 1,400 metres. And in the third race, I don't pick up any changes as of this morning yeah. thus far anyway. In fact, there is one, sorry. And that one it involves number five, uh, Fish Eagle who has Alamites in front and races unshod behind. Now, oh, Archimedes is the favourite here at just short of four to one, number seven, after two successive seconds. Camley Court and Free Movement are at four to one. Brave Viking is at six to one, that's number four. And then Fish Eagles at seven to one. Equestrian Affair at eight and a half to one with Cash Slip. Give us your thoughts. What did you think in the first leg of the PA today? Well, again, at first when I looked, it looked easy, but the more I went into it, the more difficult it became. We've got some nice bankers later. Um, a few with chances. Nick, I thought Camry Court had a definite chance. The draw of 10, not ideal, but Diego de Gavea for the AZ team, the mayor went over 16 to 2,000 metres, so just going to get better as going up in trip. I know she is running over the same trip here. Uh, Black Lightning came out and won from that form line on Thursday. So for me, Camry Court's the value. Obviously, number seven, Archimedes, is a big runner here. The 10, uh, free movement. That was not a bad debut at all. And LMB came out from that form line one on Thursday as well. So that form line has been franked. And then um, a horse like number four, Brave Viking. Number 12, Silvano Song. Mm. Not easy, this, Nico. But I'm going to go eight from seven and then 10. But I'm loading up in the PA. 
Okay, so that's interesting that uh, you're taking that view of loading up because I thought exactly the same thing, actually. I don't think it's clear cut. Um, no. By the way, my first choice would also be Camley Court here, number eight, um, son of William Longsword. Again, the draw puts me off a little bit, but yeah. um, I think that, um, you know, he's got the breeding um, to go close over here. And I think there's little in it between Archimedes and Camley Court. So wherever I put the seven, I'll put the eight. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Interesting horse for me, Lyle, that I wanted to ask you about was this horse Equestrian Affair. I know it's come off a long break, but um, rested five and a half months. But that horse, Wiccan Warrior, is not too bad. I see it's running in Cape Town now. So if Gareth Van Zale thought it was good enough to take to, um, was it Gareth or Gavin that trains that? Uh, one of the, I think it's Gareth that trains Wiccan Warrior. Yeah, Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you gone to run in Cape Town, um, then, you know, it's got to be fairly decent for, for them to take it all that way. Yeah, you make a point. Good point, Nico. So it has to be included as well in, in what it's a tough race. Yeah. Okay, shortlist um, for the PA, well, though? Um, I would I would go 8, 7, and 10. I, I would like to put number 5 as well. I think number five's a runner, too. And yeah. the form line from Fish Eagle does come up from race one. So we'll know by then how that form line, that wind water form line works yeah, in race yeah, one. Yeah, okay. I, I don't mind Fish Eagle either. It's tough. Yeah. I, go, I would go four of them. Yeah, I was disappointed with the Fish Eagle's last run. It ran six and yeah. a half minutes back, but I think Munger must have got off and said, put this over further. It, it, yeah. it, it's, um, it can't, sprit, well, it can't, it's too quick for it, 1,200. Needs more. So it needs further. So I think that must have come from uh, that's why he's back on it. Um, that's just yep. a presumption, obviously, but obviously they're trying to go further. Anyway, so so Lyle and I both like eight and seven here as our top choices here, Camley Court and Archimedes, but there are a few others. I've mentioned uh, yep. Equestrian Affair. Lars mentioned Free Movement and Fish Eagle. Um, it's not as clear-cut as we want it to be anyway. Let's no. move on no. to um, our betting again, and we'll go on to the start of the pick six. I'll uh, hook that up now. This is a pinnacle stakes over 1,400 metres. Number two, Eliad. No blinkers now with a compression mask on, Eliad, and has earmuffs on. This was coming back from a six-and-a-half-month rest, Eliad. Um, and that's the changes with regard to race number four, just the changes on Eliad. Now, here's the betting courtesy of um, one of our sponsors. And uh, Dice is the favorite at 28 to 10. The Philly Under Your Spell is at 33 to 10. We've got Duke of Sussex at uh, just short of four to one. Out of the Darkness at four to one. And then it is nine to one Humdinger and better the others. Um, Pinnacle Stakes, 1,400 metres, operates on uh, bands of merit rating, uh, exactly how they weighted. But the important thing is that the fillies or mares get a three kilogram sex allowance in this race. Um, and that obviously uh, gives them a slight advantage. And, and some of those are fillies. Now, I had a very interesting take on this race. La, I studied this race for a long, yeah. long time. And I've come up with an interesting take on it. But I'd like to hear your thoughts first. I wonder. I wonder if we're not talking about the same horse here. Is it by any chance fateful day? It is indeed fateful day. Yeah. It is indeed the fateful time, day. and that's because the time he won the consolation was better than the than the actual heritage itself. Yeah. And he's two and a half kilograms better, yeah. and Duke of Sussex remains the same. Correct. Um, it was one of the strong points, but I looked into mm. it even deeper. And I, uh, you know, I think it is time we called upon our good friends at Form Grids, actually. Um, if I can just stop this now, because whilst we're talking, mm. I, in your book, you'll be able to see it, right? Yes. But some people might not be able to see it. So I do want to bring this up because this is what we're all about here on Cocking the Gallop. We don't like just tipping horses and telling people why and that. We'd like to show them for themselves so that they can do the homework themselves too. So let's go to our friends um, at uh, Form Grids. And uh, I want to just bring this up for you. Now, in your book, Lyle Cooper, if you look back, mm. and it was pretty early this year, to a date on the 2nd of April, what yes. did you see there? Nordic um, Rebel Run. Yes, correct. The Nordic Rebel Run. And so for the punters out there, this is what we're going to be talking about now. We saw the betting show Duke of Sussex a lot shorter than Fateful Day. It's actually 18 to 1, Lyle. I know, it's ridiculous. 
Fateful day is 18 to 1. Now, here is what we're going to tell you. Here is Duke of Sussex, and here is Fateful Day. They ran, as Lyle correctly mentioned, in the two big races on Grand Heritage Day. Duke of Sussex won the main Grand Heritage Day, and Fateful Day won the um, consolation race. Um, Fateful Day comes in with 49 and a half kilos. But the interesting race that I'd like to go back to is the race on the 2nd of April, which is race number 792. That's the reference, which is here. And here no. is the uh, nub of the conversation and of the argument. In this race, Fateful Day carried 55 kilos and ran 1.6 length dead eat third behind Nordic Rebel over the Turfentain 1,600 meters. This is 1,400, so a bit shorter. Duke of Sussex carried 57 and ran 0.9 of a length behind Fateful Day. Duke of Sussex goes down three kilos Fateful day goes down five and a half kilos. So there we go. Is two and a half kilograms better off, beat it by 0.9 of a length. And one of them, fateful day is 18 to one. And Duke of Sussex is a lot shorter when we go back to that betting. Here's the betting. There is. Duke of Sussex, there is. less than four to one. Fateful day is 18 to one. Now, if you go on that yep. one Nordic rebel run, um, there's quite a bit to choose on that. So so that will be our value, won't it, today? Great, value. Value bets straight off. Yeah. Not drawn particularly well, though, is the negative. True. That is true. You're yeah. right. So it's not easy. This race is not easy. Yeah. That's, but we're just picking up the value here. It's a very yeah. good price. So that, yeah. that, anyway, so I'm happy that you've picked that up. So, so give us the short list of names over here that, that you're going to go for. All How right. So obviously, pick? obviously, but Dice is not particularly, um, you know, well weighted here. But Dice is a big runner. The, I know this horse is just top, top mm. class, and he almost pulled it off last time. He's one and a half kilograms better off with Duke of Sussex. So he, he, he's he's my first selection from the twelve, Faithful Day, who is my second straight selection. And then, of course, the very talented and very nicely weighted and your spell, also not drawn well, Kelvin Abib for Sean Terry. She's just so good. This daughter of Cape Town Noir. And then we also have to mention horses like Out of the Darkness and um, Duke of Sussex, obviously, mm. and Humdinger. Can't, we can't leave Humdinger out here with 53 kilograms and Cabello Matanyani mm. nicely weighted. This is a tough race, Nico. You know, even if you look at a horse like Supreme Quest, if you go all the way back to that run behind Under Your Spell, yeah, we've beaten three quarters of a length, in six Durban, kilograms yeah. better off mm. with Under Your Spell. Oh, goodness. This is a tough race, Nico. So I'm glad we both found a value, but I'll go pretty wide in the, in the bets. Okay. Um, I made a Duke of Sussex a runner. As, as like you, I made Dice a runner. Um, but I thought that the value definitely lay with Fateful Day, yeah. the winner of the consolation yeah. coming to Turf and Dane. Recently been gelded, by the way, and um, offers up uh, some opportunities there. Okay, let's move on to race five, which is the grade three Tony Ruffle stakes over 1,400 metres. In the fifth race, number two, Royal Victory, has got blinkers on. It's an important change because uh, this horse has never worn the blinkers before, but gets them on today. And I know that you've been batting on uh, quite a bit about uh, Royal Victory in the Tony Ruffle stakes. Uh, Lyle, tell us why you like Royal Victory so much. Oh. Right, so, Nico, I, I really studied this race quite hard, and he literally holds the whole field. Simple as that. Yeah. Last time out, um, when he ran against Union Square, one or two people mentioned him, and I almost laughed at him. I said, oh, no, Royal Victory's not going to run, you know, that sort of race. And he did. So his runs are just phenomenal. That's second to Cousin Casey, second to Cousin Casey, his third behind Anfield's Rocket, his fourth behind Union Square last time, drawn 12 or 13. And just to give the viewers out there one example, he beat Thunderstruck by one and a half lengths, and he's three kilograms better off mm. today. He, he thrashed Thunderstruck on the and he was, and he was, and he was His draw was worse than Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck, Correct. Uh, we could give Thunderstruck an out there, but but he was drawn worse than Thunderstruck. Correct. Um, and Thunderstruck is a really good animal. Um, now I've got you is held by Royal Victory on the Cousin Casey form lines. Royal uh, Golden Prospect is held twice by Royal Victory on the Cousin Casey form lines. A River Ditchio is held on the Anfield's Rocket form line. Uh, he, he just literally... He just holds it. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. 
Okay. I have utmost respect for Thunderstruck. He's a Group One winner. We know that. Mm. So and that's the reason. Right by the way, that's the reason why he carries sixty, um, because yes. he is a Group One winner in this race. If you're a Group One winner, you pick up a three kilogram penalty. So that is the reason why he carries sixty, and Royal Victory carries fifty seven. Yeah. So on on paper, Nico, Royal Victory cannot lose this race. Yeah. They don't run on paper. So Thunderstruck, obviously, very decent individual. Um, a River Ditcher ran a good second last time and a good time. Um, that'd be the dangers, but we've got to take a start somewhere. And on paper, Royal Victory looks very hard to beat. Okay, it's 11 to 10. Thunderstruck is 28 to 10 and a River Ditcher at 9 to 2. Now I've got you, who I think has got a better chance than it had last time out, to be honest, uh, when it was a sprint. Uh, it travels up to 1,400 now. Um, now I've got you is at 5.5 to 1. Okay, that's uh, done and dusted. We agree on that one. Royal victory. Let's go to race six, which is the three Troika stakes, grade three, 1,400 meters. This runs at five past three. Let me tell you in race six that there are no changes as of uh, this morning at 7.30. And we need to uh, run through this one pretty quickly because we are running time. We, we have uh, dwelt on races a bit. But let's talk about race six. What do you fancy here? I think it's a very open race. Um, I like number three, Rock the Fox, is my first selection. I see it's gone into favourite now. Kelvin Abib, Sean Terry, nicely weighted, drawn two. Blinker strike here this afternoon. A lot of very good runs there. Um, the second selection for me is number four, Queen of Smoke. Still, you could say slightly unexposed. I think uh, she could be anything still. Then number seven, Kinky Boots. I don't know. You know, Kinky Boots, I know this is a very talented individual. Let's see how she goes today. So I'll certainly keep her close. And then um, a horse like number five, Moraine. Um, how was that run behind Captain Pig, where she did mm. beat number three, Rock the Fox. So big runner as well. And then I'll mention Bless My Stars and Miss Cool as well. But Bless My Stars is held um, by Rock the Fox on that last run. So for me, three, four, seven, five. Not easy. Okay. My first choice is Queen of Smoke. Um, I liked that last win. Of course, she was demoted. Um, yeah. wasn't she because she lost it in the, in the in the objection room and uh, plenty of people have quite have had quite a bit to say about that um yeah um uh, she may well you know have her day in the sun today and uh, if you do the interview i wonder if whether Stuart Petrick will be there to do the interview but uh anyway we'll oh, wait and see what transpires yeah. we're already jumping ahead of ourselves but i liked queen of smoke i thought rock the fox had a chance interestingly enough i thought a horse that's run two bad races in her last two will improve today and that's a horse called berengaria Number six, mm -hmm. down right down at the bottom at 25 to one. I think she's better than her last two. If you go to the run to Miss Daisy, um, she comes into it with a, with a bit of a chance, yeah. uh, Lal. So I don't right, know she did, need the six. She beat Rock three. the Fox there. You make a good point. Yeah, I, I looked at that run yeah. and I thought at 25 to one, uh, she could run better. If she brings her A game to the course, she could run better. But my first choice is Queen of Smoke. And I think she's been running consistently well, although I have healthy respect for the top yeah. one. Rock the Fox. Okay, race seven. Let's move on to that, which is the Grade Three London New Stakes. It's over eighteen hundred meters, and in the seventh race, it is all clear. Surprisingly, only a field of six here. It's normally a lot mm -hmm. bigger than that, but the Summer Cup winner comes back at the Betway Summer Cup winner is Puerto Manzano. It's the even money favorite with Red Saxon second base and Electric Gold behind it. What are you going for? Well, yeah, I mean Puerto Manzano. Yeah, this is a definite banker for me. I'm very confident. Over and done. Another group three for Porto Manzano on paper. Um, he's waited to win. We know how good he is. He's drawn well. One for one course of distance. I mean, there's not one single negative mm. about Porto Manzano. I don't think they can beat him. But I do have respect for the wonky horse. I say wonky with inverted commas. Electric gold. Because, I mean, this, this horse hasn't run anywhere near horses like Porto Manzano. But 51 kilograms, mm. and if you actually look at the weights, not the not the worst in the world. So I thought um, Porto Manzano will win this race, and I thought Electric Gold could run a nice little place. Okay, so I have exactly the same sentiments as you. Um, we'll tip the exacta here. Porto Manzano Ooh. to win, and the five and a half to one chance, Electric Gold to run second. Um, interestingly, Royal Victory who we label earlier on and that Tony Ruffle beat this by two and three quarter lengths in the Dingon. So we'll be able to see how well Royal Victory runs in order to get a good line. But I've tipped them one from five here as the exactor. So that's the way that Agreed. we did that race. We're taking the straight line. I, I'd there. be surprised if it actually ran any other way, but yeah. 
Yeah. In fact, I've put. Um, I'm not going to be silly to do that, but but uh, my workings out here, you'll be able to see here at the bottom here. It, it's all gobbledygook, but it, it works out that yeah. there is a certain distance that I'm expecting them to be between them, and I'm be, very interested to see whether that distance holds up. I'll I'll tell you at the track whether we're right or wrong. Okay, okay. let's move on to the eighth race now. Uh, we don't have much time of show left, just the five minutes here. Scratch the numbers two, Bureau de Lejeune and four, Snow Palace. And number five, Wakanda, they've taken the tongue tie off this one. Um, now only a field of seven runners. How do you view it? Um, well, we've got our bankers out the way, so I'm, uh, I thought it was open, in, in meaning that the four of them had a chance. Um, nine, Silver Hills, five, Wakanda, eight, Tulip Tree, and number one, Terra Time. I thought they'd fight it out. And that's the order I'll be going with. Uh, Silver Hills won a very good race. First selection. But uh, I do have respect for the other three. Okay. I'm also on Silver Hills. So once again, very much the same horse here. Uh, the mother, Ash Cloud, won two Oakses. Mm. So the distance is absolutely no problem. Stepping up from a no 14 problem. to a 1600. She won well enough. Back to the future. Won yeah. well in the next start. Um, in fact, Nick, I must have said the, one, the fact that she won over 1400 is actually quite incredible. Yeah, absolutely. That was a good win. Mm. The half-brother uh, is Pakaya, who was a well-thought-of horse in Cape Town from the Justin Snaithwaite that really didn't live up to expectations. He was by Trippy. Silver Hills is by Silvana. There's umpteen opportunities that um, uh, there are in front of this horse's career. And Cabello Mazzignani gets on from a good draw, carrying 52 kilos. So Silver Hills for us at uh, five to two is the yeah. top choice over here. You mentioned second Wakanda. The tongue tie yeah. comes off. I gave that a chance. Um I'm expecting number six to run a better race than it did last time, Ode to the Ocean. I'm not saying it can win, but I certainly think it's in and out. It's time for a good run. It runs, runs one bad, one good run. Mm. You look at it, uh, mm. and uh, maybe it's time for it to run a good race. So, so I think that it might run up into the quartet. Over. Okay, race nine. Good. It's the lucky last, as they call it. It is a Phillies and 75 handicap, and it's over a mile. Uh, in the ninth race, scratch is number eight, Risky Business is out of the last race, and that is the only change there. And can we complete off our preview by agreeing on the ninth race? Because we've agreed on most of them. I think there's maybe only one or two that we haven't had a coffee on anything, so that's pretty interesting. No, uh, to we start haven't. Here. But give me a light is the favorite here at uh, 15 to 10, it looks like. Quantum is at 9 to 2. United Council at 5 to 1. Princess Ozma is at 11 to 2. And Pascal Samurai is at 7 to 1. While I take a sip of coffee, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I thought that, again, there were four of them that could probably win this race. And the, the, the seven United Councils, my first selection, Muzi for Robbie Sage, they're so good together. Number five, Quantum. I did that interview with Alec Dead last time. I was in shock when the horse won at six to one. But Alec said this horse is obviously a lot better than he ha she has been showing. It's got to be a runner again. Number two, give me a light. An obvious contender. Drawn in one. Two excellent runs so far. And then number one, Princess Ozma. I want to mention that one as well with the 60 kilograms. So I think I wasn't. I think maybe you're more confident than me in this race. I thought seven, five, two, and one. I'd go with those four. Yeah, I had the opportunity of calling Gimme a Light's first run home. Um, it weaved its way right through the traffic, coming from mm. off them to beat Mighty Goddess, who was uh, labelled by many as the best bet that day. And uh, this one came through at forty to one and one. I was very happy with the run behind Winter Greeting because we know Winter Greeting won in Cape Town just a couple of days ago, and is now three from three, well bred horse. I remember us speaking about Winter Greeting uh, sometime back when she made her debut. Very well, Brett Horse. I'm very much in Gimme Lights camp. I think uh, whatever Good. beats her will win. Um, in, in terms of running second and third, I'm not quite sure, you know, um, on what will run second or third, but I sort of will lean maybe towards the way that they've got them in the betting here. Uh, Pascal Samurai, everyone ignores the source every time it runs. Every uh, time. It, it's gone up tremendously. I mean, it was at 51, I think. It's now 70. So it's gone up 19 points in the three wins. But the point is that it can roll start to finish. So if it's having a good day, it may well go start to finish. So I'm very much in give me a lights camp. I'll put it that way. Good. I'm dead because I wasn't sure. So that, that's good. Yeah. Gives me some confidence. That's fine. Oh, I like that quite a bit. Okay, Lyle. Sure. We're looking forward to working with you a bit later on. Thanks very much for your input. We do have the Cocking the Gallop direct line, which once again, we remind people to get on board. You've got until Thursday midday to get on board the direct line for 250 rand, and you'll get the sort of assessment that Lyle and I have come up with today. Lyle, um, have a great new year. I know you, Charlene, and the kids um, 
uh, have been working hard during the festive season. I hope it's a great year for you guys. And thanks for being very much being part of Clocking the Gallop. You too, Nico, and I will see you later. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.